Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman. Today we're learning about tempo indications, which is why I have my trusty tempo indication machine here. A tempo indication is a musical term that appears, sorry, something must be wrong with my tempo indication machine. I see. We're stuck in Largo. Let's fix that. Phew, that's better. As I was saying, a tempo indication is a musical term, often in Italian, which always appears at the top of your piece, telling you how fast or slow to play. And can also tell you about the mood of the piece. Something must be wrong with my tempo indication machine again. Whoa, all the way set to prestissimo, no wonder. Phew. That's better. I think I'll relax for a moment and a nice comfortable andante. Since my machine seems to be a bit unstable today, let's learn more about tempo indications by listening to examples of music by some great composers. One of the trickiest jobs a composer has is to take all the musical sounds in her or his head and turn it into symbols on a piece of paper that another musician can pick up and then recreate those sounds the composer originally had in mind. In this piece we're listening to now by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Mozart wrote the word on Dante at the top of the score to let the performers know to play it at a peaceful, relaxed tempo. Andante means slow, but not too slow. Andante feels relaxed, but it still has movement. Perhaps like a walk along the beach, taking your time, but still going somewhere. Let's practice saying it. Repeat after me. Andante. Good. Now, let's turn the dial on our tempo indication machine one notch slower to adagio. Adagio means slow, even slower than andante. There's less movement, making it more contemplative and inward. If andante is a casual walk on the beach, then adagio might be more like sitting alone in a grassy field near a quiet forest and just thinking. What you're listening to now is a piece called Adagio for Strings by Samuel Barber. It's one of my favorite pieces. Let's practice saying Adagio. Repeat after me. Adagio. Good. Now, let's go all the way to the slowest setting on our tempo indication machine, Largo. Largo means very slow and stately. Largo has great dignity sometimes even a feeling of majesty and is completely unhurried, like this piece we're listening to, which is marked Largo in the score by the composer Dvorak. Let's practice saying it. Repeat after me, please. Largo. Now, let's review our three tempo indications on the slower side of our dial. Let's say them all one more time, starting with the very slowest. Largo, and then working our way up to Andante. Please say them with me. Largo, Adagio, Andante. Good. Now, let's keep going in the fast direction now. One notch faster than Andante lands us on Moderato, 
or as the Italians would say, moderato. Moderato is right in the middle of our dial. It's considered a medium, moderate speed. In Rachmaninoff's famous second piano concerto, Rachmaninoff chose moderato as the tempo indication for this first movement that you're listening to now. You can hear that it's not too slow and not too fast. As Goldilocks would say, it's just right. Let's practice saying this one too. Repeat after me, moderato. Great, now buckle your seat belts. It's time to start speeding things up. Next on the dial is allegretto, which means medium fast. To me, allegretto often feels like skipping or dancing. It's often happy and playful. It can also feel a little urgent, like perhaps the way you would walk to school if you're running late. Come to think of it, allegretto could be a useful word for your mom or dad. Instead of just saying, hurry, come on, let's get in the car. All she has to say now is, allegretto people, allegretto. This third movement of Beethoven's Piano Sonata number 17 in D minor, which you're listening to now, is marked allegretto in the score. Can you find and point to the tempo indication in Beethoven's score? If you are pointing right here, you're correct. Let's practice saying it. Repeat after me, allegretto. Next up on our tempo indication machine's dial is allegro. Allegro means fast and lively. Allegro is running and jumping, having a good time, cruising down the highway with the windows rolled down. Right now, we're listening to a piece by Mozart called Eine kleine Nachtmusik. Try saying that five times fast, which he marked allegro. Let's practice saying it. Repeat after me, allegro. Now we get to presto, which means very fast. Composers use presto when they want the notes to really move lightning quick. In fact, in the piece we're listening to right now, Summer from the Four Seasons by Vivaldi, the fast notes are actually meant to represent thunder and lightning during a wild summer storm. Let's practice saying it. Repeat after me, presto. And at last, we've made it to prestissimo, which pretty much means to play as fast as you can, without playing it sloppy, of course. You won't hear any sloppy playing in this faster than fast performance of Flight of the Bumblebee. I think it's a perfect example of prestissimo. Let's practice saying it. Repeat after me, prestissimo. Now, let's say all of our tempo indications one last time, from the fastest all the way down to the slowest. Say them along with me. Prestissimo, presto, allegro, allegretto, moderato, Andante, Adagio, and Largo. Good. Now, to finish up today, we're going to play a game to review all the words. We're going to pretend it's your birthday, and we're going to sing Happy Birthday to you using our various tempo indications. Whenever you see a tempo indication appear on your screen, I want you to say the tempo indication out loud, then continue to sing in the new tempo. We're going to start with this one. Say it out loud with me. Adagio. Now, let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Allegro. Happy birthday to you. Andante, happy birthday, dear. Largo, 
sing your name. <laughs> Presto, happy birthday to you. Now, one more time, and this time let's pretend it's my birthday. So say each tempo indication word and sing along with me. Moderato. Happy birthday to you. Largo. Happy birthday to you. Allegretto. Happy birthday, dear. Presto, Mr. Hoffman. Adagio. Happy birthday. Prestissimo to you. Nice work learning some of the most common tempo indications in music. Today, we've learned some of the more common tempo indication words, but there are so many more possible tempo indication words too many to cover in this lesson. But if you ever come across a tempo indication that you don't know, just look it up in a music dictionary or find it online. Remember, the tempo indication is one of your best clues from a composer to help you know the right mood and speed to play the piece. So I hope you'll always remember to watch for them every time you start to learn a new piece. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Mr. Hoffman. Hi, Scuba. Happy birthday! It wasn't actually my birthday. We were just pretending that for the lesson. Ah, uh, that makes a lot more sense because that seemed to really sneak up on me. Well, anyway, I bought you some really delicious looking grapes. Really? For me? Thank you. Sorry it's not a cake, but I hear that you've been trying to lay off the sugar. Well, that's true. And since it's not really your birthday anyway, well, here you go. Thanks, Scuba. I will definitely enjoy these. I actually like good fruit better than even cake. So, thank you. Would you like to share these with me? Oh, no. I uh, have something I need to do. I'll see you later. Okay, bye, and thanks again. Hey, I have the best idea. Let's watch what happens to Mr. Hoffman eating when we use the tempo indication machine. <laughs> Allegro. Ah, pretty good. Let's try Adagio. No, oh, how about Largo? All right, let's see how he handles Presto. Oh yeah, all the way to Prestissimo. <sighs> hey, Mr. Hoffman. How were the grapes? They were amazing. But you know, a funny thing happened. Um, hey, you weren't playing with the tempo indication machine, were you? Um, maybe? You know, I think I gotta go. Hey, Scuba. Hey, come back here. I've got Sharky. Now, monkey. Ooh, ooh.